I believe the role of a black woman is to work for a just society, to the kind of a society in which children can grow up without fear, in which they can hope. Don't you think so? Really, you know, to boil it all down, a uh, black woman is a mother of civilization. That's it. She's a mother of the earth. She brings, she bears forth fruit to fertilize the soil. Initially, black psychology was very male-centric. It focused on black men, and it didn't contend with gender and gender differences in any critical way. There was kind of a default that blackness meant maleness. And over the past couple of decades, we've begun to correct that, to really acknowledging the impact of gender, and importantly, to acknowledging sexism. We're not just struggling with racism, we're also struggling with sexism, patriarchal systems that have been in place and that make assumptions about men and women that aren't necessarily true. So when you start from women who are often the most poor and women who often are the most vulnerable as caretakers of children for the most part, when you start with their needs, then you ultimately deal with the needs of the family as a unit and then the community as a whole. I define a psychology of black women and girls as a psychology that addresses the thoughts, the feelings, the experiences, the behavior of black women and girls, and that tries to make sense of and understand that in the particular context in which black women and girls live. It's a psychology that must look at the impact of race, of racial identity, of racism. It must look at the impact of gender. You constantly are thinking, now how will this affect black women? How will this affect African women? How will this affect anyone who is dealing with uh, the caretaking of children and the caretaking of families? By starting with women, then you ensure that the family unit and then the community unit is basically going to be safe, fed, and whole. The girls that I work with usually come with a high level of self-esteem. The self-discovery is where I see the gap. That black girl excitement has been crushed. And I think it comes from just now being told in certain environments that they can't, they need to sit down, they're loud, they're in the way, you're disruptive, um, you're bossy, and they have no idea how to nurture that bold girl because now she's become the loud girl, the girl that's bossy, the girl that's in the way. So now she doesn't know what to do with that. And she's trying to kind of rediscover who she is and that self-esteem that she has, she's like been told that it's too much, that it's in the way. And now she's trying to figure that out again. So we have to understand the importance of how we as black women socialize black girls. We socialize our black girls to be androgynous, to be both independent, but compassionate and caring at the same time, because that has been a survival for us as black women. We can't be just caring and compassionate and helpless and dependent. And so we have to understand the, uh, the roles that black women have had to undertake and also the institution of enslavement, oppression, discrimination. And in doing so, also understand that black women have had uh, quite a bit of resiliency. We have survived and in many cases we have thrived. I think it's really important to have some focused attention on the psychology of black women and girls because of the particular and unique history of black girls and women in the United States. Uh, black women have had to make very difficult decisions in very complicated contexts about when to push for freedom and liberation and when to sit tight, about when to speak up and when to shut up. And they've had to do that on behalf of themselves, but also importantly on behalf of their partners, on behalf of their children. And, and that, that context, that cauldron, uh, has created a kind of complicated psychology for black women. I think that, that unfortunately, a lot of us, black men and black women, believe in the myth of that matriarchy. And I think mm -hmm. that, that, that that belief engenders a lot of negative things. Number one, it, it says 
that matriarchy is inferior to patriarchy, which is a whole thing right there. You see that patriarchy is a sort of natural or divine order of things, which is not so. Two, that black men have believed and internalized the myth of white womanhood in this country and Anglo-Saxon impositions so that they place us in relation to where white women are. The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. Shifting is a construct that has to do with the ways in which black women change their thinking, their feeling, or their behavior in response to racial and gender bias. It speaks to all the ways that black women maneuver, if you will, sometimes consciously, but oftentimes unconsciously. When I first decided that I wanted to provide a program and services for girls, specifically black girls, the girls taught me something else. They truly told me what they needed. And it wasn't just about preparing them for etiquette classes or their culture and giving them enrichment activities. It was about the world and the narrative that they had about a black girl. So some of the things that I even tried to change in her, I realized that that was what created her to be authentic, what made her different and unique and lovable and funny and joyous. And I wanted to nurture all of that, but also make sure that the world didn't see that everything that a black girl does is not a bad thing. We are preparing black girls for the world and the world for black girls. Because one thing that I have learned from over a decade of working with girls is that they already know what they need. The wisdom lives inside of them. As long as they have infrastructure, mentorship, and resources, they could build what they need, not only to survive, but to thrive. And as black women, we have to be the inspiration for the nation, for our men. We have to start out into the community educating the children, educating ourselves. Because once we educate ourselves, the children will become educated because we, we are the ones that teach the children. We are the ones that are with both female and male children. We are the ones that the children look to as the image in terms of their daily education. And we don't get our values mixed up and feel that we have to educate the world. We haven't first educated ourselves. Ooh, it's still always know, a self right, thing. Right. I mean, the world will relate to us once we can relate to ourselves. The syndrome of the strong black women embodies independence, well-being, resiliency, sometimes even racial and ethnic pride. It also embodies characteristics like suppression of emotions, feeling like you have to have multiple roles. Overall, it may be functional at some point, but the negative health consequences are showing up because you know if you are not regulating your emotions, it's going to have some physiological effects on your body. They have sucked us dry, that we have nursed the children, we have fed them, we have done everything, or put all our energies, all our work into working for the white family. And now it's time for us to take all our strength, you know, we're supposed to be the strongest woman anyway, it's time for her to take all our strength, all our milk, all of that, and put it into working for the black nation. Black psychology is liberation psychology for black people with the understanding that once people of African descent are free, everyone's free. A black feminist psychology builds upon black psychology and liberation psychology by making clear that when we take care of women's needs, then we're already taking care of the needs of children. And they were freeing men as well to be who they are. We are simply looking at the needs of women in order to better address the needs of children and men. And so it frees both men and women from the um, rigid definitions of what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman. And it moves us to a level of basically what does it mean to be human? So I think the psychology has evolved in paying more attention to those to that array of intersections 
uh, looking beyond simply race and gender and addressing some of the other factors that impact people's sense of self, well-being, and behavior. You see, we are human beings, and we are not stopping now till we get something that's better. We worked all these years for nothing. Women have gone to the field and worked from 10 to 12 hours for $3 a day. Those things are wrong, and we mean to right them by standing up. Ultimate 